In this presentation, I'm going to show you how to create a multi-tier ODBC DSN that connects to progress. I'm going to be working with a 32-bit operating system. If you intend to create your own progress ODBC DSNs on 64-bit windows, you want to stop now and you want to locate the video that's specific to DSN creation on a 64-bit windows operating system. During the course of this video, I'm also going to be making some basic assumptions. I'm going to assume that you know whether or not your progress database is operating in sockets or shared memory mode. I'm going to assume that you know whether or not progress is accepting SQL 89 connections, SQL 92 connections, or both. I'm also going to assume that you have installed our multi-tier server components somewhere within your network. If you are not familiar with Progress and you have not installed our multi-tier server components, you want to stop now and you want to locate the videos that pertain to Progress connection prerequisites and or multi-tier server components installation and configuration. Alternatively, if a colleague has set up the multi-tier server components installation and is more familiar with progress, you may want to work with that person to obtain the information that you will need. Now that said, you want to click your start button, expand that menu, locate and launch the control panel. You want to locate the administrative tools subfolder within that control panel, open it up. Locate the data sources icon, double click it. You will see the ODBC data source administrator. This is a Microsoft utility. You will see that you can create user DSNs, system DSNs, or file DSNs. For best results, we suggest here at OpenLink that you do work with system DSNs. So click that tab, click the add button. You want to locate your OpenLink generic ODBC driver in the driver list. If you have multiple versions of the driver, just look to the right of the driver name and choose the version of the driver that you want to work with. You may also note that there could be a mix of Unicode and non-Unicode drivers on your system. You would only choose Unicode if you're working with multi-byte character sets such as Chinese. If that doesn't pertain to you, avoid the Unicode driver for performance reasons. There'll be translations going on here and there that you don't need. And just select the non-Unicode driver as I'm doing here. Click your finish button. Name is just a suitable title for your data source or data source name. The description field is optional. You can use it to provide some insight into the use of the DSN or, or some insight into what the DSN connects to. Server. This is where you pass the IP address or the host name of the machine that hosts the OpenLink server components installation. You type a colon and then you pass the TCP port on which the OpenLink request broker listens. This is one of the server components. Click Next. The domain field. This is a specialized OpenLink parameter. If you are connecting to progress 10, you would always pass progress space 100 SQL. That's going to enable you to connect to progress 10 in SQL 92 mode. You can always use the drop down to make sure that you are using the correct case and spacing conventions. It's progress capital P space 100 capital S capital Q capital L and that is important. If you were going to connect to Progress 9 in SQL 9.2 mode, you'd pass Progress space 9.1 SQL, like that. If you were connecting to Progress 9 or Progress 8 in SQL 89 mode, you would pass the version of the Progress Database Agent. That's an open link server component. 
you pass the version of that agent that you downloaded and you want to use to connect to your database. So if you downloaded Progress 91D agent and you want to connect to Progress 91D, you pass Progress space 91D and use your drop down for reference to get that casing in space right. Alternatively, if you downloaded the same Progress 91D agent and you wanted to connect to Progress 91E, you would still pass Progress Space 91D. Now, if you have any questions at all about the use of this field, you would want to contact OpenLink Product Support and we can set you right as to what value you need to be passing here. Now, I'm connecting to Progress 10, so I'm going to pass in the the default, the database field, that passes the name of the database to which you want to connect. Now if that database is on Unix, we do recommend that you pass the full path to that progress database. If you are connecting to progress on Windows, you may just need to pass the name of the progress database. DB connection options. This is the field that you would use to pass your progress socket parameters if your target database is running in sockets mode. You would type in minus capital S followed by your progress socket service. You can use the name or the port number followed by space minus capital N which was always TCP. Space minus capital H followed by another space. Here you would pass the host name or IP address of the machine on which progress is running. Now, if your database was running in shared memory mode, this field would be blank. At this point, you want to make sure that this checkbox here is checked. By checking this box, you are going to instruct the drivers to perform a test connection to make sure that the parameters that we've passed thus far are valid. For login ID, you would pass your progress username and for password, you would pass the associated password. Click Next. The fact that we've arrived at this particular screen suggests that our connection attributes are valid. Since this is an introductory video and you are probably new to the product, I'm not going to go over the remaining parameters that you will see on this and other screens. These parameters often pertain to use of our drivers with specific applications. They may be diagnostic parameters. They may pertain to performance. These are things you want to revisit after you have a functional connection. Click Next. Click the test data source button and you see that our DSN has established a successful connection to the progress database. This concludes this video.